last topic for black hole is what is the fate of black holes. Once the star becomes a black hole, what happens to it? Okay, so we said, how does it become a black hole? What are its physical features? Can we use it for time travel? What else can we use it for? We answered, how do we discover it? And then finally, what is their fate? Uh, initially, when we thought a star becomes a black hole, we thought that it would live forever as a black hole. It would just stay a black hole and just end up as a black hole. Then Stephen Hawking, uh, he has done a lot of uh, work on black holes with his colleagues and stuff. He showed that black holes have something known as temperature. Even though they're black, they still have that, that concept of temperature. And when things have temperature, they radiate slowly, right? They uh, evaporate. So even if you have a cup of water, and a, if you have a cup of uh, alcohol, which one is going to evaporate quickly? Alcohol evaporates quick, more quickly than water does, right? So if you come maybe a week later or something, alcohol might be gone. How long do you have to wait for the water to be gone, evaporate away? Probably a very long time, right? But if you wait thousands of, ye thousands of years, will the water evaporate? Eventually, yeah. Because water also has temperature, right? It's going to eventually, the evaporation rate is very slow, but it will still evaporate. Same thing with black hole. What will happen to the black hole is every little bit by little, little by little, it's going to emit radiation. And uh, it says they radiate away their radiation. And because Hawking is the one that uh, suggested this, this is known as Hawking radiation. This radiation will cause all black holes to evaporate like alcohol and water. Low mass black holes will evaporate very, very slowly. Just like low mass stars die, it takes them a long time to die, right? Same idea. Low mass star doesn't shine too bright, therefore it lasts very long. Low mass black hole doesn't evaporate very uh, uh, quickly, therefore it lasts longer. Uh, high mass black holes evaporate away their uh, mass more quickly. They will be the last things that remain in the universe zillions of years into the future. So basically the ending of our universe will be when the uh, galaxies are much, much farther away from each other. They don't have any more energy to generate new stars. And then stars end up as basically white dwarfs, black holes, neutron stars. And then the black holes will basically be the last things to evaporate away. Okay? And then a new universe will, be, will begin at that point. A universe, new universe hopefully will begin. And then that universe will give birth to other people, civilizations. This shows you the mechanism of how... Uh, Hawking radiation works. What happens near the event horizon of a black hole, a, a particle-antiparticle pair all of a sudden is created. Particle-antiparticle from virtual empty space. This is from quantum physics, okay? So uh, a photon is created and it's anti-photon. The anti-photon goes in the event horizon, the photon goes away. Uh, electron is created, it goes in the event horizon, uh, opposite of electron is called positron, positron goes out. So all of a sudden in empty space you have particles created. One of them goes in, one of them goes out. One of them goes in, one of them goes out. The one that goes out is the radiation that we see emitted from the black hole. Pairs of virtual particles made real by the black hole's gravitational tidal force. And then the black hole emits this energy and then eventually it radiates away its mass. If you want to read more on this stuff, there's a lot of books. Uh, there's a warning that I have to give you. Some of the books are very mathematical, so try to avoid those. There are books that are written for lay people, and they take the math out. Okay? So just if you just want to know about time travel, if you want to know about black holes, wormholes, there's a lot of books out there that are written for the regular public. One of the famous ones is Brief History of Time. There's a, a newer one of that called Briefer History of Time. Uh, uh, Stephen Hawking wrote it. Universe in a Nutshell, Stephen Hawking wrote it. There's other books written by other authors. A lot of good books written at this level. 
and you can do um, your report number two on this topic too. It's a good report that you can do, okay? A lot of my students have done their reports on that. Okay, now let's go to lecture 12. 